subscribe to bizbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories Being ethnically Indian, 37-year-old Twitter CEO Parag Agarwal would be familiar with the practice of sati, in which a widow jumps into the funeral pyre of a slain husband rather than be captured and abused by his conqueror. In a similar fashion, Agarwal made Twitter swallow a poison pill rather than let it be taken over by Elon Musk, who made a 43.2 billion dollar offer to buy all shareholders of Twitter and own it 100% himself. because he felt the platform was not a free place for chatter and that twitter moderated content by shutting out right wing voices and those the management did not agree with something that even the founder and former ceo jack dorsey admitted to we are adding our own bias which i fully admit is more left leaning admittedly it is a toss up for any platform to decide what to allow and what not to should it have silenced majorly taylor green for this I just posted official stats of adverse effects of vaccines. Or Alex Berenson for posting this. So what if they are both right-wing conspiracy theorists? Because their left-leaning duplicity clearly showed when they put in Twitter jail the New York Post for revealing the underhand dealings of Joe Biden's son Hunter Biden in China and Ukraine during the height of the 2020 election campaign because it would have spoiled Biden's chances of victory. The biggest ban of course was their permanent ganging of Donald Trump's Twitter account the day he left the White House in Jan 2021. Trump did try to fight back and break Twitter's stranglehold, setting up his own Twitter-like platform Truth Social, but it gained little traction with just 175,000 downloads as compared to 290 million Twitter users. Trump's dig at Twitter's extreme duplicity Big tech gives the Taliban the freedom to speak but not me. Falls flat because even Trump's platform boots out users who mock him or his Republican supporters. Incidentally, Twitter could well have been the platform for free speech had they listened to one of their engineers, Blaine Cook. It should not be a platform at all. Where most of the company wanted to scale Twitter's business with ad support like at Facebook and Google, both of which are closed models keeping communications within wall gardens blaine cook proposed something radically different twitter should be the backbone for online chatter allowing it to exchange messages across all platforms years later dorsey regrets his decision i realize i am partly to blame but were the platform to open up and allow all kinds of views an almost entirely ad dependent platform like twitter could see the advertisers melt away therefore the new ceo parag is experimenting with even more revenue models like live audio called spaces to attract the voice market and tokenization and subscriptions to encourage mid level influencers to be more active therefore his handing over the baton to someone possibly holding even stronger leftist views our role is not to be bound by the first amendment but to serve a healthy public conversation seems to suggest Dorsey was forced. In fact, back in 2020, investment firm Elliott Management bought into Twitter with just this intent in mind. As being the CEO of Square, in addition to that of Twitter, Dorsey would not be able to deliver on targets. Musk took an early dig at Parag, warning that he may be another Stalin. In the pick on top, Parag is Joseph Stalin and Dorsey is Nikolai Yazov, Stalin's close-eyed who did the premier's dirty work. In the pig below, Dorsey is not there, referring to Yazov's fallout with Stalin and his subsequent execution. Meanwhile, Dorsey has gone back to his pet internal project, Blue Sky, a Web3 initiative to give control back to the user, allowing them to curate tweets with their own algorithmic logic, opening the protocol structure to link other platforms, and adding cryptocurrency. Web3 is the future of the internet. With over 560 million internet users, India is now the second largest online market behind China. Government programs like Digital India aim to increase internet connectivity within the country. One such driver of growth of online investment is digital inclusion small case, a diversified portfolio of stocks in the digital space. This small case consists of companies like data providers, equipment manufacturers and infrastructure enablers working in the data chain and enabling higher internet penetration in India. It also includes online service companies in consumer and business internet services 
that will benefit from higher digital penetration. Small case allows you to own shares in all these companies, thereby diversifying your risk, allowing you to earn from their growth while still keeping your investments safe. The investment manager is SEBI registered, as are all on small case. And they have kept a 2 is to 1 ratio between investment in online services and telecom operators. It has been further balanced rather evenly between large and small caps. Already they have taken care to filter out illiquid stocks or those where significant promoter holdings have been pledged. The small case is periodically rebalanced every quarter and the next one is expected in June. Investment is possible right here, right now with a minimum amount of 21,493. Small case picks themes rather than individual stocks. And if you would like to explore more themes, go right ahead. There are hundreds to choose from. The app and concept is really interesting. Download the app using the link given in the video description and register yourself. In some ways, similar to what Musk is asking Twitter to do. Open sourcing the algorithm and bringing transparency. And it's something Musk has already done at Tesla open sourcing most of Tesla's patents so as not to own any key EV intellectual property. He has also co-created OpenAI for the sharing of artificial intelligence breakthroughs with the world. Now, he wants Twitter to do the same and bought a 9.2% stake, making him the company's largest shareholder. At first, he reached out to Parag to discuss his vision. Blue tick subscribers should not see ads. Have an edit button for tweets. Too many bots, they should be removed. But when Musk sensed Parag would not agree, he rejected his offer to take a board seat. Because according to Twitter's constitution, a board member cannot buy more than a 14.9% stake. Also, he would have to gag his outspokenness. Being outside, he could say what he wanted. And that's exactly what he did by posting a range of tweets critical to the company. Showing how top accounts tweet rarely and post very little content. Is Twitter dying? Parag, spooked by Musk's intentions, went down the poison pill road. The poison pill option is not uncommon in corporate America for companies faced with a hostile takeover. Normally, they pile on huge amounts of debt so that the acquirer would be forced to take on interest payments for years and not find the buy attractive anymore. But this was largely done in the 1980s and 90s when the acquirer was not interested in continuing to run the business but to break it up and sell it in parts. But Agarwal's poison pill defense strategy is a little different. If anyone, meaning Elon Musk, were to buy 15% stock or more without the board's approval, then the board would give all other shareholders extra shares at a deep discount so that the hostile party share would fall and he wouldn't be able to acquire the company. Being the largest shareholder gives him the right to believe the poison pill strategy is against shareholder interest to whom he promises to take the offer to, bypassing the board entirely. And whom he is already enticing. The board's salary will be zero dollars if my bid succeeds. So that's three million dollars saved right there. Musk's bid values Twitter at 43 billion dollars. But Saudi royal Al Walid bin Talal, who holds a 5.2% stake, thinks the price is too low. It doesn't come close to the intrinsic value. Irrespective of what happens with Musk's bid, what he has done is opened up the floodgates for other bids, making it seem unlikely that Twitter can remain an independent company for long. Funnily enough, Parag is fulfilling some of Musk's agenda anyway. An edit button for tweets is on the way, but only for verified users. However, with bots being around 15% of active Twitter profiles, Parag can't take them off without jeopardizing his own future. Musk supporters are now worried that the platform will once again be opened up to the far right and are attacking their once mentor on social media, saying that he stifles free speech by blocking people on his Twitter account, accuse him of firing an employee for posting a YouTube video on its autopilot reviews, and that he requested the Chinese government to censor criticism of his cars. At the moment, the Twitter board is closing ranks to ward off Musk. But interestingly, a Republican Twitter board member, the billionaire investor Paul Singer, may support Musk in moderating censorship. And if none of it works out, Musk may exit, most likely at a substantial profit, adding a few billion more to the 212 he already has. Bizbo's Limerick There was once a free bird called Twitter, who deleted messages that they thought were bitter. Free speech complained, but their angst was in vain. Now Elon Musk wants to set right what they frittered. You will also find these sources listed in the video description section.